Where should you move your vehicle if you break down while driving on the highway? If you break down while driving on the highway, you should move your vehicle so that all four wheels are out of traffic lanes as soon as possible. If you cannot move it, you must have it moved as soon as possible. What is the farthest away you can park from a curb? You should not park more than 12 inches away from the curb. If you have a manual transmission, what gear should you put the car in when parking downhill to an uphill? If you have a manual transmission, when parking downhill, shift to reverse. When parking uphill, shift to first gear. What if you have an automatic transmission? For an automatic transmission, shift the gear selector to park. What if you have an automatic transmission? If you have a manual transmission, when parking downhill, shift to reverse. When parking uphill, shift to first gear. For an automatic transmission, shift the gear selector to park. Where is parking prohibited? Parking is prohibited in the following places. On crosswalks, on sidewalks, in bicycle lanes, in intersections, on bridges, on overpasses, in tunnels, in front of driveways, by yellow painted curb. Which way should you turn your wheels when parking uphill along a curb? When parking uphill along a curb, turn your wheels away from the curb. Which way should you turn them where there is not a curb? If there is no curb, turn your wheels to the right. Which way should you turn them if parking downhill? When parking downhill, turn your wheels to the curb. Are motorists required to stop or yield for pedestrians crossing the street? Motorists are required to stop and remain stopped for pedestrians crossing the street at any marked crosswalk or intersection. What must you do when you see a pedestrian with a white cane in the street ahead of you? When you see a pedestrian with a white cane in the street ahead of you, you must come to a complete stop, yield the right of way, and use extra caution. What is the minimum distance a motorist must give when traveling next to a cyclist? The minimum distance a motorist must give when traveling next to a cyclist is three feet. As a motorist, what should you do when preparing to turn right on a roadway with a bike lane? When preparing to turn right on a roadway with a bike lane, you must yield to any bicyclist in the bike lane and turn behind the cyclist. When on the roadway, do motorcyclists and moped riders have the same rights and responsibilities as motor vehicle drivers? Yes, motorcyclists and moped riders have the same rights and responsibilities as motor vehicle drivers. If you are driving a motor vehicle, are you allowed to share a lane with a motorcyclist? No. As a motorist, you are not allowed to share a lane with a motorcyclist. The motorcyclist is entitled to the entire lane. When a school bus is stopped to unload children on a highway divided with a raised barrier, are vehicles traveling in the opposite direction required to stop? No, vehicles traveling in the opposite direction are not required to stop if the highway is divided by a raised barrier or an unpaved median of at least five feet wide. When a school bus stops to unload children, are vehicles traveling in the same direction required to stop? Yes, vehicles traveling in the same direction as a school bus are required to stop when the bus is unloading children. You must remain stopped until the bus withdraws its stop signal 
and all children are clear of the roadway. What must you do when children or school crossing guards are present in a crosswalk? When children or school crossing guards are present in a crosswalk, you must yield and stop at the stop line, not in the crosswalk. What must you do if an emergency vehicle with activated lights and or sirens is approaching you from behind? If an emergency vehicle with activated lights and or sirens is approaching from behind, you must pull over to the closest edge of the roadway and stop until the emergency vehicle has passed. Do not block intersections. What does the move over law require you to do? The move over law requires you to do the following. On a multi-lane roadway, vacate the lane closest to the stationary law enforcement, emergency vehicle, tow truck, sanitation, or utility vehicle, if possible. Signal your intent to change lanes. If you cannot move over safely, slow down to a speed of 20 miles per hour below the posted speed limit. On a two-lane roadway, slow down to 20 miles per hour below the speed limit if you cannot move over. What is a no zone? A no zone refers to the blind spots around large commercial vehicles, such as trucks and buses, where other drivers cannot see the vehicle. At what times must you use your headlights? You must use your headlights in the following situations. 1. Between the hours of sunset and sunrise. 2. When you turn on your windshield wipers during rain. 3. When visibility is less than 500 feet due to adverse weather conditions, such as rain, fog, or smoke. At night, Within how many feet of approaching a vehicle from the rear must you dim your high beam headlights? At night, you must dim your high beam headlights within 300 feet of approaching a vehicle from the rear. Within how many feet of an oncoming vehicle should you dim your high beam headlights? You must dim your high beam headlights within 500 feet of an oncoming vehicle. When driving in the rain, fog, or smoke in the daytime, what lights should you use? When driving in the rain, fog, or smoke during the daytime, you should use your headlights. Additionally, drive with your lights on low beam, since high beams can reflect off the fog and impair visibility further. What should you do when driving on wet roads in the rain and why? When driving on wet roads in the rain, you should slow down because roads become slick, especially if it has not rained in a while due to oil buildup. Increase your following distance as wet road conditions will increase your braking distance. Be cautious of hydroplaning which happens when your vehicle slides on a thin layer of water between your tires and the road. What should you do if your right wheels go off the pavement while driving? If your right wheels go off the pavement while driving, you should 1. Take your foot off the gas pedal 2. Hold the wheel firmly and steer in a straight line 3. Brake lightly 4. Wait until the road is clear then turn back onto the pavement at a slow speed. 5. Signal your intention. What should you do if your tires begin to skid while driving? If your tires begin to skid while driving, you should 1. Take your foot off the gas pedal. 2. Do not use your brakes, if possible. 3. Turn the vehicle's front tires in the direction you want to go. When emergency braking, what is the difference between conventional brakes and anti-lock brakes? A, B, S. When emergency braking, the difference between conventional brakes and anti-lock brakes, A, B, S, is as follows. Conventional brakes 
drivers must pump the brakes to stop during an emergency situation where traction is lost and the vehicle slides. This involves applying and releasing the brake pedal in a pumping motion to avoid locking up the wheels. Anti-lock brakes, ABS. Drivers should press down hard on the brake pedal and hold it. The ABS will automatically pump the brakes at a rate faster than the driver could. If the driver removes steady pressure from the brake pedal or pumps the brakes, it will disengage or turn off the ABS. What should you do during a tire blowout? During a tire blowout, you should 1. Take your foot off the gas. Do not use the brakes. 2. Concentrate on steering the vehicle. 3. Slow down gradually. 4. Brake softly once the vehicle is under control. 5. Pull completely off the pavement chalked roadway when it's safe to do so. What must you do if you are involved in a minor accident and your vehicle is blocking the flow of traffic? If you are involved in a minor accident and your vehicle is blocking the flow of traffic, you must move your vehicle or have it moved to a safe location. This helps prevent further accidents and keeps traffic flowing smoothly. If you hit a parked car and are unable to find the owner, what should you do? If you hit a parked car and are unable to find the owner, you should make every attempt to locate the owner and notify law enforcement. If you cannot locate the property owner, you must leave a note that includes your name, contact information, and license plate or registration number. What are the penalties for leaving the scene of an accident involving injury or death? The penalties for leaving the scene of an accident involving injury or death are as follows. Death, first degree felony, minimum four year prison term. Serious bodily injury, second degree felony. Injury, third degree felony. All of the above offenses also result in losing your driver license for a minimum of three years. What are the requirements of the no-fault law? Requirements of the no-fault law in Florida include, before registering your car, you must show proof of personal injury protection and property damage liability coverage. If your license and registration are suspended for being in violation of the no-fault law, what must you do to get them reinstated? If your license and registration are suspended for being in violation of the no-fault law, you must 1. Provide proof of valid insurance coverage. 2. Pay a reinstatement fee, which can range from $150 to $500 depending on the circumstances. What are the penalties if you are at fault in a crash and you are not insured in compliance with the financial responsibility law? If you are at fault in a crash and not insured in compliance with the financial responsibility law, the penalties include suspension of your driver license and or vehicle registration. You will be required to pay for the damages caused in the crash. You may need to carry higher limits of liability coverage for a specific period to reinstate your driving privileges. What are the time restrictions for a motorist with a learner's license? A motorist with a learner's license in Florida must follow these time restrictions. For the first three months, they are allowed to drive only between 6 a.m. and 7 p.m. After the first three months, they are allowed to drive only between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m. Three months, they can drive between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m. Additionally, they must always be accompanied by a licensed driver who is at least 21 years old and seated in the front passenger seat. What are the time restrictions for licensed drivers under age 17 and drivers under age 18? Then the time restrictions for licensed motorists in Florida are as follows. Under age 17, 
they are not allowed to drive between 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. unless they are driving to or from work or are accompanied by a licensed driver who's at least 21 years old. Under age 18, they are not allowed to drive between 1 a.m. and 5 a.m. unless they are driving to or from work or are accompanied by a licensed driver who is at least 21 years old. When can you be charged with driving under the influence? You can be charged with driving under the influence if you are driving or in physical control of a vehicle while under the influence of alcohol or drugs and your normal faculties are impaired. You can also be charged if your blood alcohol concentration, that is BAC, is 0.08% or higher for drivers aged 21 and older, then 0.02% or higher for drivers under the age of 21. What are the penalties for refusing to take a blood test, a urine test, or a breath test when suspected of driving under the influence? The penalties for refusing to take a blood, urine, or breath test when suspected of driving under the influence in Florida are as follows. First refusal. Your driver license will be suspended for one year. Second or subsequent refusal. Your driver license will be suspended for 18 months and you can be charged with a misdemeanor. What can happen if you are found guilty of racing on the highway? If you are found guilty of racing on the highway in Florida, the penalties can include a fine of up to $500 for a first offense, up to one year in jail. Your driver license may be revoked for one year. Subsequent offenses can result in increased fines and penalties. If you have a learner's license, how many hours of driving experience are required to earn the Class E driver license? If you have a learner's license in Florida, you are required to complete 50 hours of driving experience, which must include at least 10 hours of nighttime driving to qualify for a Class E driver license. What education course are you required to take if you're applying for a learner's license and you have never held a driver license? If you're applying for a learner's license in Florida, and have never held a driver license, you are required to take the Traffic Law and Substance Abuse Education course and pass a vision and hearing test. Are you required to notify Florida DMV of any health problems that may affect your driving? Yes, you are required to notify the Florida DMV of any health problems that may affect your driving. This includes any medical conditions that could impair your ability to operate a vehicle safely. Let's see some. Why would one opt to take a basic driver improvement course? You might opt to take a basic driver improvement course for several reasons, including reducing points. Completing the course can help reduce points on your driving record, preventing potential license suspension Insurance discounts. Many insurance companies offer discounts on premiums for drivers who complete the course. Improving driving skills. The course provides valuable information about safe driving practices and can enhance overall driving skills. Court requirement. A court may require completion of the course as part of the penalty for a traffic violation. What maneuvers are required on a driving exam? During a driving exam in Florida, the following maneuvers are typically required. 1. Parallel parking. Demonstrating the ability to park the vehicle parallel to the curb. 2. Stopping and starting. Properly stopping at stop signs and traffic signals, as well as starting again smoothly. 3. Turning. Making safe and proper turns at intersections. 4. Lane changes. Executing safe lane changes including using mirrors and turn signals. 5. Backing up, 
Reversing the vehicle safely while checking for obstacles. 6. 3 point. Turn, performing a 3 point turn to change direction safely.